on uh, this morning but as you know I'm the talent and the IT person but I've got us up and running and I am coming on to you in three two and one here we go so if you can see and hear me everybody please let me know sorry sometimes you know you uh, the the stuff the equipment just makes you want to restart and then uh, you have to make sure that everything is connected so I am always up to the task give me an IT task so I'm sorry I am a little tardy for you guys today so um, but nonetheless I am here you are here and my project is here as well so we are going to um, whoop it up today 100% so I'm excited about that so uh, I can see that you guys over there on YouTube I have my YouTube feed there and you guys over there on my Facebook feed I've got you over there Janice is moderating over as Facebook and uh, on YouTube rather and Gita is moderating over on Facebook as beadshop.com so I'm very grateful that you both are there and um, all y'all uh, are here to see uh, this fun show. So our, one of our, um, our customers, Lori, um, emailed in, or she might have posted in the bead group, I'm not sure. But let me jump on over here so you guys can see. Uh, a great way <clears throat> to connect with us is on our social. Um, you can find us, of course, on Instagram at beadshop.com. I know that Drea just posted something special up there, something special that's back in stock that you guys have been waiting for, so I'm real excited about that. Of course, you can also uh, connect with us via our uh, Facebook group uh, called The Bead Table over on Facebook and you can join us over there. It'd be great to have you. And of course, you can subscribe and follow and do all that great stuff right on our YouTube channel, right at beadshop.com. You can also email us. <clears throat> great place to email us, of course, is info at beadshop.com or if you have questions about anything, the info at beadshop.com is your fastest uh, line to us. Okay, so it's really uh, great to have all of you guys here. So, as I was saying earlier, Lori, and I think she reached out on the bead table, I think, and she said, you know, we've been doing a lot of seed bead work and stuff lately, and I would really love it if you did a show that had all the stuff together you know, all of the closures and everything for seed beads. And, you know, I've been I've done a lot of skill builder. Um, if you go to our website over at beadshop.com and you go up to the top, right, and you see under learning, there's a whole bunch of skill builders. And those really mean that they build your skills, right? So today we're going to build your skills on seed bead closures. So I have a whole bunch of stuff on the pad in front of me. I'm going to show you how I um, how I finish off a few of these and then uh, we'll take it from there. So don't hesitate. And if you guys um, have a question or whatever, um, or a request for a show or any of that good stuff, um, jump in and email us at info or post it in the group because I'm always looking for good, fun topics. So, Lori, this one's for you and for everyone else. All right, so let's take a look what I've got on the pad in front of me, shall we? Let's click on over. So I've got a bunch of stuff here. So let me try and make sense of some of this business. Uh, and then uh, we'll just forge ahead. So I've got some things, some closures over here, right? And so I'm going to go over these guys here. And then we're going to look at this stuff over here, OK? And then I even have a continuation of what Emily did last week with um, 
the odd count peyote, we're going to use those uh, for closures as well. Okay, so I'm using, <laughs> I told Chris before I went into this, I'm like, I am using all my brain power <laughs> this morning. So, so stick with me. All right. So um, in the words of Margot Channing, hang on to your hats. This is going to be a bumpy ride. So hopefully not so bumpy, but I do my Margot Chan Channing imitation every time I can. So on beanshop.com, as you know, we have a bunch of different um, projects uh, that utilize seed beads, utilize what we call bead looming or bead weaving, okay? And so I've laid a few out here just as a reminder. This is Janice's, I'm going to try and scoot this over just a little bit so you get them a little more in view. Let me get this going up. Um, this is um, Janice's uh, pebbling uh, project, her tricks to looming and pebbling with seed beads. These are all A dots, and she shows how to use um, the uh, really wonderful ultra suede for the ends. And this is a great way to um, just close off a simple woven bracelet, right? You can see here's the front, here's the back, the button is stitched on. And there's just some of that, uh, what we call compassion suede uh, cord here, but you could use any kind of cord, right? So this is, this is kind of a, a classic here. And it, it's really, I think, beautifully done. And in that same vein, I've done a couple of redos of our Gypsy Leather project which is here, also similar, all right, uses that compassion suede, uh, or the ultra suede around the end, and instead of using compassion suede as the loop closure, <coughs> pardon me, um, I used size 11 seed beads, uh, not COVID, just, uh, just, um, <laughs> just I need a cough here, a glass of water, so hold please. Okay, so there's this, all right, this one here. And you can see, so it's closed very similarly. And these are stitched in here rather than woven. Okay, so we, you can see that, and that's how that closes. So you can check that one out. Okay, and it closes in a very similar way. All right, so this one, and I'm thinking about revisiting this one, you guys, because I love this project, it's called tapestry um, and you can see it utilizes super duos and it's woven and it's woven with um, we use Ceylon for that so it has a little bit of a heavier um, warp the warp threads are the threads that go up and down the weft threads are the ones that go right to left um, and this has been glued in okay and and the way that's done is you actually weave what a little header is what we call them weaving a little header and then that gets glued into these magnetic clasps and so we have a ton of these different magnetic clasps and they're great for closing your seed bead work however you want to make sure that you don't use too much glue and I'm going to actually do some gluing today so we're going to talk a little bit about glue etiquette Okay, but tapestry is so, uh, so delish. I love it. I, I think it needs to be revisited, right? I, I love it. Love this one. Uh, this one is called, I think this one's Magic Carpet. I did this one. I did this one early on after I returned back to bead shop. And uh, those of you who, who have been watching a while know that I like to call myself an Omnicrafter. And I know a lot of you like to call yourselves Omnicrafters as well, right? And so I wanted this one to be a little more thread forward. So it has beads, you can see. It has um, the great love of my life besides my husband and my cats. <laughs> It has these little shadow beads, and then it has size 8 um, copper seed beads, but it's on a bracelet, it's loomed, it's woven, right? And in between, I used regular Ceylon to get some textile look 
into this. I don't, A, I don't wear this enough. B, I don't show this enough. But darn, I love this thing, right? It's such a good, um, if I do say so myself, it's such a great project and it feels so delicious. And it really marries my love of textile weaving, which I do. Um, and uh, bead weaving, which I almost do. And Anne has a question. Uh, the first bracelet, was that machine stitched or stitched by hand? Is that this, uh, this one, this gypsy leather one stitched around the outside? If it was, it was stitched by hand. Um, I did kind of like a, a, a blanket stitch or something around it. I'm assuming that's the one that you need. And I love that Kaylin's saying all of her projects are whack. You put the horse before the cart. Girl, let me tell you, I put the heart horse before the cart all the time. And I think that's how you learn, right? You have to kind of jump in and um, just I don't know, pull that cart yourself, right? That's, that's my feeling. So don't, don't worry. And whack is sometimes not so bad in jewelry making. And that's how we learn, right? You learn by mistakes. You see kind of the best of the best most of the time here. Sometimes, especially with it's a live broadcast, I kind of screw up, but that's, that's how you learn. That's how you do it, right? So this one's called Carpet Ride. Thank you, JP. And it's a wide one. This is a wide, a darn wide bracelet. Um, it is uh, 40 millimeters wide or um, almost two inches, um, an inch and a half wide there. So um, I, and I dig it. I really do. So I, I'd like to revisit this one too, but essentially it's, uh, a warp, right? I've warped with, um, I bet I used micro, I'm just guessing, but it's all there um, in the project. I bet I used micro Ceylon for the warp and then for the weft. And the, 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 the way that you remember what's the warp and what the, what the weft is, weft rhymes with left and that your threads are going from left to right across. So that's how I remember that. And then your warp threads are the ones that the beads are weaving in. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, and this is the skyscraper clasp, I think. It's still available. And all of the, um, for those of you who are newish, right, to us, we don't do kits. I mean, once in a while we do kits. But if you jump over to beadshop.com, you can find, I'll just put this here and I'll do it again at the end, but go right to beadshop.com and you'll find all of the information on the project and the products from uh, today's broadcast on the website. Okay, and if you have questions, just um, shoot a question right into info, okay, and we'll be glad to help you out. But this one, I, I guess I need to stop, um, you know, <laughs> tooting my own horn on this one, but I do love it. So this one aside. So this is a good way to close off, right? And the 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 weft uh, here is just woven. There's a header that's woven, and when you um, weave on a loom, right? Tapestry. When you weave on a, on a on a loom to make cloth, that bottom part and the top part is called a header. So that header that you weave is then glued to the inside of this clasp. Okay. So that's how that how that happens. Uh, this one, this was, I think this might have been the first project I did coming back. I don't know. I did this project so long ago. This one's called the Illusion Cuff. And I have the, I have the, the um, pattern for it, but essentially this is two colors of seed beads and it ombres from, like in here you can see the gold and the gray is mixed in and then it kind of goes equally and then it goes the opposite direction. So it's super easy. We have the chart for it under illusion cuff. You can, you can look at it. And this one I use, these are eight dots. And this one I used the um, tube 
this tube closure that I love. And this one essentially is, and, and this one you need, it, it, it can be frustrating to use if you don't use it correctly. So what this goes, and I'm going to address looms. I saw Curtis had um, a question about looms and stuff. I'm going to address that in a minute. But so this, when I wove it, and then you weave what you can see. I'm going to see if I can pry this end open so you can see what's inside. These clasps, these tube clasps, um, what you do, let me see if I can open it with the awl. These aren't really meant to be opened and closed, but I'm going to throw caution to the wind so you guys can see what's in here. Um, I'm going to really go in tight so you can see this. It's kind of hard to see, but essentially what you do is you weave it all. You weave in a final row of A dots, okay? And then you glue, you glue it like you mean it, okay? Then once that glue is dry, it stiffens that top row of beads, um, and then you cut away your um, warp threads, trim them down so they're all glued nice and tight. The glue, you ask? Well, you could use <clears throat> E6000, and that's probably what I would use if I wasn't in a hurry, right? Because the E6000 is going to stay where you put it, and it's not going to run. Oftentimes, though, I use Zap because it sets quickly, but the Zap, it is a gel, right? But it can run down your beads here into the loom work and you can you can kind of you know it's stiff right there so you really want to be very careful not to get the glue and I'm going to show you I'm going to glue this one in a little bit but when you're using glue it's like you have to really be in the zone because you don't want that glue to run down here. And you know, when we're rushing to finish projects and stuff, like this one, like with this tapestry, I'll show you, I'll point it out. There's a glue, there's a little bit of glue right there that isn't pretty, right? So number one, when I glue, I glue on the back of the project. So if any glue runs out, it's gonna run out on the back and not the top, okay? So, uh, so with this one, and you'll see in, in the video that I did with this, glue, 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 let it sit. I always let my glue sit 24 hours, right? 24 hours. Then I'll come in, then I'll give everything a haircut, right? A little trim. Then this tube opens and slides on. It would, it would slide on like this, right? Now what you could also do if you didn't want to do the gluing, this one, if you'll remember, this is from my State Fair project that I did a while back, the, the woven project. I wove each of the um, warp threads back down into this piece so there's no gluing. Okay, so you could still use, you'd choose the right one, right? And I don't want to shove this in there too much because it's not going to stay in there. But see how those A dots, that row of A dots would fit just perfectly in there with no glue. Okay, so there's two ways you could use it. So I want to be very careful not to wreck my end because we're going to close that off a little bit in a different way. But can you see that, how those would go? And they come in some different sizes, right? So this is the large that I used. I'm going to shut this down here so I don't catch it on anything. And that's how you close it up, okay? So this one, <clears throat> um, where's my, here we go. 
This one, let me go to mil millimeters and let me zero this sucker out. There we go. And we should have the measurements. This is about 30 millimeters here, right? The medium sized one is about 19 and a half millimeters. And then the small one is about a little over 15 and a half millimeters. Okay, so you can um, just choose, you would choose the tube that worked and then you'd make your project fit it, right? So this one would probably fit that medium slide tube and I have two, four, six, eight rows of ADOT woven here. Okay, so that's that. So that's the slide tube. And then the slide tube you would connect, I like to connect it to this swivel a lot. I love it. And then on the other side, I used, um, I can't remember which chain this is. Um, it's not circle back, but it's the large version of circle back um, that you can use to make it um, adjustable here. Okay, so this is so this is a, a good way to go. I, I really like these and they come in all different flavors too. Okay, this one is called I think we called this one Premier. This may have been I don't know. I keep feeling like all of these were my first projects when I came back. This clasp is called Cornerstone and it's a little bit of a chunky monkey. Okay, it's kind of a big one. And I wove, bead wove, I used shadows, I used regular shadows. And then in, down the center line, I used a, I think that's probably a three millimeter, um, all the way down the center. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. And I wove a header. And you can kind of see, if I kind of pull it back like this, you can see that Endless Love, thank you Janice, that's what that chain was called, Endless Love. I wove that header back and forth and it's about maybe a quarter of an inch or so and that's what glues in. Now the thing when you're using these types of clasps, these types of um, the magnetic clasps, right, and you glue them in you can glue them in so your project gets too tight and it'll warp, okay? So what I do is I finish off like one side, right? Like I'll cut it off the loom. I'll, um, if I'm weaving it back in like this, I'll weave it back in. But if I'm doing the header, what I'll do is here are my beads, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? There are my beads. Then I'll weave that header in, right? Like that, right? Then before I do anything else to close it, right? And then here are my warp threads coming through, right? You still with me? That glue, I'm really careful. Like what I'll do is I'll get like a baggie and sometimes I'll even cover these beads up like this, right? And I'll add my glue with a little bit, of, with a toothpick, a little bit of E6000 or Zap or whatever it is I'm using. And I'll paint that glue on really, really carefully on those ends, right? Really, really carefully. And what I'll do is, um, just kind of really, you know, let it kind of sink in and, and set. And I'll let that sit 24 hours, right? Then I'll come in with my thread snips and I'll snip it away, right, off the loom, okay? And I'll do the same for the other side too, okay? So I'll, I'll do that and then on the opposite end, um, once I've glued this side down, right? Then on the opposite end, what I'll do is, while this is still on the loom, I'll kind of massage these beads a little bit and I'll kind of 
I don't know, hit it a little bit with my finger. So I know that there's room, right? Because if I weave in the second side, right, and glue it tight, when I free it from the loom and the beads are too close together, your piece is gonna warp, right? And you can see that a little, though it's not, it's just kind of the nature of how these beads are. There's plenty of room in here. But when you cut it off the loom, your threads will contract and you'll have a piece that's warped and you'll be like, this is the worst thing I've ever gone through, right? Or at least bead wise, right? So kind of pet the beads, pet the beads, glue this side, pet the beads, kind of, you know, even them out on your loom, then weave in your header on the other side and glue that, okay? then you should be okay because you want this to be nice and flexible. Yeah, I dig this piece. I think we call this piece Premier, I think. And it's it's a good one. We got these really um, killer clasps called Cornerstone and I, I needed something that, a bead that kind of stood up to it. So I think that these um, regular shadows really do. And if you see, if I raise my wrist, right, um, you can see that I used for the warp threads, I used, um, I probably used regular or fine Ceylon for that, and I think I used micro for the weft. Okay, uh, Caitlin still, she still calls it whack. Well, I would call that, definitely I'd call that whack, right? So, um, so let me show you now these stitch in ones that we've got. Okay, and I see that someone's asking Carla, uh, what about that closure with peyote? Hold that thought, sister, okay, because I've got that coming. All right. So, um, so here is that one I did a while back, right? And I, I don't know, I did this for, um, I don't know, one of the, it was for the State Fair mix for Brittany State Fair. Well, I finally finished it, right? And what I did was I cut away the loom, the, the warp threads. I threaded a needle like, right? Here's my needle, pretend it's threaded. And I just went back through and just wove it back through each warp thread. And if you look at the original um, video for this, you'll see me weaving those back through, okay? So, uh, so what I did to close this off, so it's just a strip of woven beads, okay? So this, like I said, could be put in one of those tube clasps, right? And, uh, but what we used is we have these really cool, what we call the Marrakesh print, and eight of the seed beads, when they're woven, or in the bead world we say loomed, which I know makes weavers, makes weavers teeth want to gnash, but um, it's a piece of loomed work or woven bead, bead work that eight across um, eight aught bead fits perfectly in that Marrakesh crimp. So you can see the Marrakesh is open like this and it's very similar to this um, uh, crescent crimp. Now these would also work, Carla, on flat peyote stitch pieces. The only peyote stitch piece I have here right now is this one, and I'm going to do something else with it, but I think you'll get the idea. Let's pretend that this strip that I have here, this is mimicking Emily's odd count peyote from last week's live broadcast. Let's say that you made a peyote stitch that was this wide, maybe with eight dots or whatever. And you can see, hang on, maybe I have something here. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Hang on. That's why I never put anything away. Because I need it right here. Okay. Here is a piece of peyote stitch. 
Okay, flat peyote with the A dots, the A dot delicas. Okay, and so when you peyote stitch the closure, it's kind of hard to see here with this, but you have some space there, some up and down space. Okay, <clears throat> with these A dot delicas. You can see I finished it off with a shadow bead here and then an 11 knot Delica. Okay, this is real wide. This is going to be a cuff closure like, you know, like we did. Remember, Janice did this one, right, with the button and a loop, right? And see, she will peyote stitched a little header. Two 11 knots for every A dot here. But let's say that, again, this is super wide because I like my cuffs like Wonder Woman style, right? So this one, I'll tell you, is about 50 millimeters or almost, almost two inches wide, okay? But let's say that you were doing something like this and you wanted, so maybe you made a strip that was a little narrower, right? This kind of closure, this Marrakesh, look at how great it looks on that. You could, I, I would say also, if you wanted, you could do a double closure. Like if I were closing this with the Marrakesh, I would use two like that. And I think it's actually not too bad. It makes me think I might want to finish this. I made this piece so long ago. I pulled it out of my archive when we first um, started to do the peyote stitching with the dot Delicas. And we have these now, the chocolate ones. And we have these kind of coppery Delicas. And these, of course, are our shadow beads here. I made this one, I don't know when I had my store in San Francisco. So it's been, it's been a while, right? But you can see, you can also, I love putting that little extra line of stuff in there. So you could also even use, if you didn't want to use the two Marrakesh, you could use the two Crescent crimps. Look at that. And then on the opposite side, you do the two and you'd put a jump ring here and then two hooks there, it would look great, right? I think it would be good. You could also, if, this is pretty good. I like this whole riffing thing. You could also, we've got this temple clasp. This is called temple, right? Um, I met with the bead group yesterday. I kind of, kind of gate crashed their little party there, and we were chatting about um, uh, clasps that were magnetic. And Michelle from the bead group, and Michelle's watching over on Facebook, I think. Um, she said instead of like with these that have the magnets, because the magnets are so on these new clasps especially, are so um, tight that instead of like pulling it off like that, pulling and pulling, you can just slide. So see here, you kind of want to slide it off this way, like this, rather than trying to pull it like that. Because the more that you pull, the more you wear on the glue that glues these in. So if you just slide them off like that, or slide it when it's on your wrist, kind of slide it off that way, it'll come off a lot easier to deal with, okay? But this one is like a stitch in, okay? So you could, as you are stitching, and I'll get a little tighter in here so you can see it, on your last go in the peyote stitch, right, you could, because these little nubs are about the same size as a size 8 seed bead, okay? So you could stitch this on the end, and I think it would look killer. You could also 
double that up and put two clasps on there if you want. Or you don't have to be like me and make a crazy wide one and do that, right? Um, so these, so all of these would work. The, the crescent, and so these have a pretty big opening, but I'm really digging, where's the other crescent here? What you could also do, and it would also allow you to do less beadwork, you could create, <clears throat> you could get jump rings, right? And then you could connect chain here, chain here, connect that center one with a jump ring, and then go to like a, you know, a, a lobster claw clasp over here. That's my horrendous drawing of my lobster claw. Right, but you could connect it that way with chain two. Does that make sense? Right? So that, um, so that, that would work out as well. Okay, so uh, so it just depends on how you want to use them. But these are really fantastic. Now you could also, <clears throat> if it were shorter, here's the slide tube. I think that these, the peyote with the slide tube, see how the peyote, how the peyote runs into that bead? right so these wouldn't be um those wouldn't be appropriate right but again i'm really sliding those on there these can be scary to use so you can just really gently even with your all kind of open up though i'm going to use my pliers i think maybe i'll open up the other side because this is a certain size here. You don't want to screw around with these too much because they're plated. Though the plating is super heavy, so it's you're not going to worry about it too much. But you can get your awl in there or something that's a little bit bigger and kind of widen this opening just a hair. Right? Be careful with this pointy awl. Right, you can also do it with your do as I do and not as I say, but you can also kind of do it with your chain with your round nose plier, might be better, okay, like that. But you don't want it to be too loose, right? You need it to actually be just right. So, when something like this again, this is the wrong size for this, <clears throat> but when this slides on, see how much easier just opening a little bit of that up makes it slide okay and can you see how it goes the sideways here right so with this with something like this like I said with this one this one I glued all right but when I weave the warp threads in that will work and what Michelle is also saying a couple of rows of square stitch uh, peyote and the slide clasp will work so that's something else that you can do on the end okay Eileen is asking can these be closed to accommodate smaller beads um you wouldn't gosh if I I need to stop <laughs> I need to actually finish this with the right closure okay I wouldn't add glue with this one if this is just going in, right? But this is the one that I wove and I just glued the ends and then clipped the thread and not wove them back in. So that's why this one needs to be glued. This one here that just slides in, I wouldn't glue, okay? I don't think there's a need because your warp threads are all the way like down here you know I weave them back pretty far okay um, with smaller beads what you could do Eileen is you could you know you could have your your 11 aughts or whatever then you could finish off your header with 8 aughts you could try that and see how it works or you could try it with 11s but I think the 11s are actually going to be a little bit small. So if you finish the row 
with 11s. And then whatever is going inside the tube is an 8. That might work. It's going to spread out your warp threads a little, but I have a feeling it would work. Okay, so mm, that's that's what I would uh, that's what I would guess. Okay, so <clears throat> we've gone over these. Let me put this away, though not too far, because I'm kind of inspired again. Um, let me pull this one out here, also similar, also a peyote stitch with this, okay. Um, you can also, this is what we call our stitch in um, oasis clasp, and I actually have one here. I'm not going to use it here, I'm just going to use it. I've got it already done, so I don't know why I'm doing that. This again is A dots, right? And there's an oasis clasp on both ends. And this is also a stitch in like this temple clasp. Okay. So <clears throat> this stitch in, and this stitch in could have been used on this end too, right? The little nubs here would have just taken the place of bead number two over here and bead number seven over here. Okay. Uh, but this one is the same thing. You can see that three of the A dots fit in between here, okay? And so you could have made this wider on both sides, but I wanted this strip to be the same width, and so it's five beads across that fit exactly with the oasis, okay? And so something like that could be connected to any kind of a clasp, the swivel, um, you know, any anything will do for that. What I thought might look cool for this is if I connected, I still have this good old piece of, of fancy pants chain that's been kicking around, right? So we could kind of make this kind of a multi-dimensional bracelet or a, you know, multimedia kind of a bracelet. I'm going to use, we have, this is one of my favorite jump rings in the whole wide world. It's that jump ring that we have from Nun Design that has the little ridges around it, right, like this. So let me open it. We can connect our fancy pants chain. I like it connecting to this tag. I just use this, right? So I'll close that up. Then over here, I have some leather cord. This is 1.5 millimeter. And I'm going to cut, I don't know, some so I have enough, maybe like 20 inches or 25 inches or so, right? But you could use any cord. And I was just thinking about this last night, so, um, and the ingredients for this are on the, the page. I think, uh, the, the State Fair page, I think I want to add a jump ring to that, and you'll see why in just a second, so bear with me here for just a moment. So I'm going to add a jump ring and then close that up. Okay, now I'm going to connect this. Now you'll remember we have those wonderful barrel beads that we use called transitions. Right? Remember those little charmers? We use those in our Tahoe projects and stuff, right? Like this. Well, we also have brand new ones that are like the transition bead, but it's a transition bead that has a loop on the top. Okay? Like this. Right? So, um, 
if I'm going to make this, I don't know, the chain is kind of, too, you know, I think the chain is gilding the lily. So let me, um, actually maybe I just want one little piece of chain. I don't know. Because I made my, my woven piece so long. There we go. So if I'm wrapping this around, right, my wrist like this, let me widen this up. And then I would kind of have to, or you can make it like a double wrap too, right? It could wrap around twice, or you could come in, you know what I'm going to say, you could come in and ladder here too, right? I don't know whatever right what, whatever works for you then on the ends and I'm not going to do it on this because I don't want to take the time to measure right now but I'll, I'll finish it later but something like this I'll get another piece of this cord and it also comes I, I wanted to show you these here they come in the size the same size as the Evolves. Get a little tighter. And they're called the Distressed End Caps. So they, they fit for the Evolve size and the Transition size. And let me measure them for you. Because I know that's helpful. These guys are about 10 millimeter. The inner diameter of the opening is about six millimeter. Okay? Like that. And then the inside diameter Sorry, I always have a little bit of spatial relationship when I want to open that up. The inner diameter of the of that one is about a four millimeter. So it's a little small for our five millimeter flat leather unless you kind of taper the flat leather in it. Okay. <clears throat> so what you could do. is once you've you know closed this up figured out what that end is and you could put like a couple more of the transitions on here right you could even I don't know I really like the rings this fancy pants chain uh, it just ha it's so full of possibilities I just adore it um, if you can't tell because I've been using it. it's been in heavy rotation lately um, but you could do something like this where you weave through them, right? This would be connected to your chain or, you know, whatever, and then you could put another transition on that side, and then you flatten them very, very carefully, right? Like this with your, with your plier. And then these two strands will fit very nicely inside there. They'll glue. Okay. And that would look really nice. You can flatten them out just a little bit. You can get up to three in there really nicely. So let's say that you liked the look of three here. Okay. So you could get, <clears throat> you could make that loop. So the loop is on the outside. Shove this, shove is the technical term. That guy in the middle, right there, right? And put your transition or whatever it is. I'm going to make all of these even because they're kind of difficult to work with if they're not.
put this bad boy <clears throat> right on there. See that? Then I'm going to cut this even shorter so it all fits in the frame. There we go. So can you see how these all would work with that Oasis crimp? Okay. I think it's pretty. I like it a lot. And then this can just be a small, you know, a short section, right? And it's a great way to transition even from a wrap or whatever. But these distressed end caps are like a whole new game changer with this. Let me get a little bit wider so you can see that whole thing. But right, so these would be two great sections of uh, of a wrap and then I could come here and I could add the chain and it could be a multiple wrap kind of situation or whatever. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so I've got one more. I want to make sure to show you. So let's look at <clears throat> like this temple clasp and that oasis. There were some questions about how many beads fit in there. So I want to show you those real quick and then I'm going to show you another trick. Today's all about kind of, I don't know, some good tricks I think today. Let me get a head pin and I'm going to pour a few beads out. Let's look at the Tylas first because I know that was a question. How many Tyla beads will fit like in between here and in, in the opening? So let me tighten this down. Okay. Um, so let's go with the quarter Tyla first. So here's our quarters. And I'm going to put these on a head pin. Here's four of those. I think you can comfortably get four of the quarter tilas in the oasis. And it looks like five in this temple clasp. Okay. For the half, Let's look at those. I would think since you could get four of the quarter tilas. Curtis is saying just the leather pieces with the transition beads would make a great guy bracelet. I agree wholeheartedly, um, especially with a little bit of color, right? You get a little bit of color in there. I think it would look awesome. Let me put this through like it, you could use the distressed gray my all-time fave let's see if three go through three is a little see three doesn't quite work right so you could put one of the quarters one of these there we go look at that so that also works with that quarter tyla in the middle okay <clears throat> quarter tyla with the temple i'm sorry half tyla with the temple looks like yeah, looks like three. Let me just go in there and put these in. But this way you get a good idea of kind of what fits in there and what doesn't. See, it almost fits. It's just not 
I can't shove that bead in there to make it fit so it's not quite right, right? So I could maybe one of those, maybe two of these. I don't know. This, two of the quarters, because obviously two quarter tilas and one half tila are not quite the same. Yeah, that looks like it fits, so let's get that in there. Go down. Now it looks like it just needs to be one. That's why I wanted to really test these out so you guys would know. There we go. Yeah, so there's a little bit of space, but that's, that's what it looks like. And then let's look at, last but not least, a regular Tyla. Here. And it looks like one is the right size for that. And it looks like one is the right size for that. There's a little bit, a tiny little bit of space, but I think it I think that's about what you're gonna get with those. Okay? So for the sew-ins. You could try a little quarter tila. Yeah, again, it's a little, see it doesn't quite, well, maybe it does, but it also looks a little off kilter. See that there? So I don't know, if you have this pattern or whatever, you could probably sneak that in, but I think just throwing in that regular tila will work. And just for fun, the tile bead here will also fit our checkmates tiles okay it'll fit fine there and it fits just fine in there okay so that's for bead sizes now <clears throat> for gluing let's glue down our other side of this okay I mentioned the different glues. If I'm not in a rush, my glue of choice for this is E6000. Number one, because it's viscous, it stays where you put it. And it doesn't, it doesn't stiffen the beads, like go down into the threads and stiffen it too much, right? So the, um, the zap will have a tendency to travel a little bit okay so uh, you can use that but you need to be super careful with it because again you don't want it to run down and stiffen so first before I glue in I double check see how much space you can't really but I'll show you here see how much space I have in here so I want to close this crimp up really carefully. Just a hair, not much, right? But I want to make sure that when I put my A dots in there, that it's going to sit nicely. That was too tight. I went overboard with that. So be careful, hold this like gently. You don't want to mark your metal. There we go. That's, that's about what we've got. Okay, so you check it. Then what I do is I'm, you've got to be super careful. You want to make sure, number one, check the crimp because this crimp has like nubbies on one side and then it's flat on the other. So knowing me, I will glue it in upside down, right? So this nubby part is gonna be the front. So I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna keep the front side up 
and I'm going to apply my glue here to the bottom, okay, um, to the piece. And Lorraine is saying go in from the side. You could do that too, like that. But you want to make sure that there's room here, um, and the glue is going to kind of fill in the space, okay. So I'm going to open up my E6000 very carefully, and I've got my toothpick here. I'm going to squirt out just a little puddle of glue that I'm going to work with. And I'm going to apply my glue to my finding and not my beads. Okay, So I'm going to come in and first I'm going to get the glue all the way to the back okay, of the finding, the bottom. Because that I want to, when I shove, again that technical term, when I shove those beads all the way to the back of this finding, that's going to adhere. Okay. So now, and you want to make sure that you're using this in a well-ventilated area, right? Not in your Facebook Live Studio, your Bead Shop Live Studio. And wearing gloves wouldn't be a bad idea either, okay? But you want to practice safety with this glue. And so I've added a little bit, some to the back, a thin layer, and I'm going to attach a thin layer on the other side, and can you see how my E6000, especially since it's a little warm in here, it's starting to set up already. So you need to work kind of, kind of quickly. Use your toothpick like a little squeegee. So you grab that glue onto the toothpick and kind of squeegee it across, right? Clean up if there's any little nubbies of glue or whatever that are there. Clean it up. Then what I do is I put this aside and I fold it over to get it because I'll put my hand in it for sure. I'll double check one more time that the finding is in the right location. I push that in, I set it on my baggie, and I forget about it until tomorrow. I resist every urge that I have to screw around with this, right? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it off my velvet pad and I'm not going to even look at it sideways until tomorrow, right? Glue, all my years of gluing has taught me that glue needs time to cure, especially like the E6000, the Zap, those types of things. If they are allowed to cure that 24 hours, it's really it's really going to hold you in good stead. Okay? So I'm just putting it there, right? Just there it is. Don't, don't even, don't address it. Now I want to show you one last thing with this before we part ways today. And it's a couple of our other new pieces and it's kind of to wrap up Emily's. I've seen some of you and your really cool rings that you made with Emily's Odd Count Peyote Stitch, which I love, love, love. Um, let me kind of clear a spot here. Sorry, everything is one gigantic mess. So let me move all of this over. Here, this, there we go. Okay. So I made a couple of little strips of uh, odd count peyote here, right? And I was thinking about how we would close it off, right? So one of the ways you could do that, and again, I'm not looking at you, I'm just moving you over there. There we go. Okay. You can, of course, form it into a ring like Emily does, right? She closes it up. What you could also do with this odd count here is you could taper your peyote up a little bit so it's just like a row of three right here and glue that right in to one of these distressed caps. So if you're making like a really skinny band there, that closure, you could use one of those, which would look really cool. I really like them a lot. 
But you can also use these, I was thinking about it, and I, I hope I've made them almost the same length. I think one is like one bead row longer. So I'll use this longer one. <clears throat> you could use these. We've got some new kind of fun pieces also from the Tierra Cast collection. And I wanted to show you how cool it would be. And you know me, I like a say something earring, right? I like an earring that says, I'm an earring, right? And these aren't too heavy. They're a big hoop. I'll show you. Where's my, in my cleaning up, I put my millimeter gauge somewhere. Here we go. So let me turn it on. Zero it off. Zero it off. Outside diameter of these rings are about 30 millimeter. So it's a big, it, it, it's a big one. And then it kind of matches this hammered hoop that we have that's about 17 and a half millimeters. But watch what I do, because you can use this as a connector. So remember how Emily zipped up, and I'm gonna zip this up for you, how she zipped up that closure. And so something like this, if you've made, let's see, say that you've made like a peyote stitch band or something, right? You could, if I can get that, let me get the other one. You could use something like this, like this ring, right? And you could just stitch it onto itself right back there, right? You'd stitch through, then you'd stitch through there. So you'd close that off. And then you could attach this ring again to like chain or a clasp or something, right? So that's a way you can use, but, but these I think will make really like killer hoop earrings. So I'm just, let me get in kind of tight so you can see me zip it up, though you can watch Emily do it, right? But wouldn't it be cool to get a bunch of these rings or these smaller rings or whatever and connect them with little strips of peyote? Now it doesn't have to be odd count. I did the odd count because Emily did that last week. If you are more comfortable with even count, do the even count, right? but I was such on an odd count kind of whirlwind that I was like, yes, I'm gonna do it, okay? And so here, I just bring it over. And again, watch Emily's episode from last week, and she will really detail this odd count, but I'm bringing this back through. And the odd count is cool because you can have that single band of beads going down the center. Right? I like that a lot. And the beads you're asking, you're like, Kate, what beads are you using? I'll tell you. They're Delicas and they are the Duracoat Charcoal Gray and the Duracoat Galvanized Dark Steel. That's what they are. <clears throat> so I'll just weave that back in one more time. And I won't take the time to weave in the other side. I'll do that later. But I just want you guys to see how that little strip of peyote, you can use it to connect like a chain. There we go. <clears throat> and ignore the extra bits of thread. But wouldn't that be cool also as like a, let me get a little bit wider here. Right, I could make like a bunch of these that connect together. 
that would make a really cool statement bracelet right that would be cool or you could connect it this way have an earring that tapers this way or an earring that tapers this way you could I don't know brick stitch around here or do something I don't know these are our niobium ear wires with the um, sterling bead which I think would look amazing so that my friends and you'll see how that will all come together eventually okay but you can see that is that right so shoo I think I think by George I think we've got it so please remember a couple of things if I may be so bold as to ask. Remember, you guys, to follow us several places, all on our social, right? You can follow us at beadshop.com, uh, on our Insta. You can join our Facebook group, The Bead Table, which uh, has great ideas great fun things go over and and we let people in a couple of times a week so if you're not accepted right away don't freak out um emily takes care of during everybody in and then of course you can hit the subscribe button especially if you're watching this later today we're live on october 7th but you can always hit the subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button to let us know you liked this broadcast and if you subscribe to our youtube channel you'll never miss one of our broadcasts you can also go right to our website, beadshop.com, and find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast. And as always, sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. I also wanted to give myself a plug, and I was too wrapped up with Emily, but I wanted to share this post with you guys. Those. Uh, you know that I also do some metal smithing work in my life, right? And so I've had the real honor to be asked by Metalwork Studio um, back east. Every year they do um, something called the Virtual Makers or the Maker Symposium. This year they're taking it virtual online. So if you go to Metalwork Studio, um, there's a whole week of really amazing virtual presentations and I was very uh, excited to be included and I'm going to be, uh, it starts uh, October 10th, but my um, presentation I believe is um, the 21st, I'm not sure. But anyway, if you go to metalworks.com, you'll find the Virtual Maker Symposium. And if you're interested in metalwork and stuff and all, um, that's all there. So I wanted to give a little shout out for that and a big thank you so much um, to Metalworks for including me and beadshop.com in this um, in this Virtual Maker Symposium. I'm really, uh, it's a great honor to be amongst those great metalsmiths there. So that's, uh, that's what I've got, you guys. Next, uh, I'll see you uh, here on Friday for Free Tip Friday. I've got uh, some fun things. We're doing some new stuff, you guys, with kimono cord. I know that you guys love kimono cord as much as we do, and we have some new kimono cord dropping as well as the kimono cord restocking. And I have kind of a cool project that I think you're gonna like, fast and fun and easy. Now, next week, you guys, you know I've had special guests on, right? You know I've had Brittany on, you know I've had Emily on, but you know who hasn't been on? Janice. You know who's gonna be on with me next week? Janice, that's right. So she has made a really fantastic wrap bracelet, right? Um, and she's gonna share that. Uh, I'm gonna be doing the manipulation and she's gonna be ch chitty chatting and talking about her um, design inspiration and design ideas for it. It's gonna be really, really fun. So you'll see Janice live and in person. The two of us will be entertaining you with our witty banter and our bead knowledge. So. Uh, we hope to see you again next week. So remember, you can find us every Wednesday and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. Sign up for those newsletters, get those reminders, 
follow us right down here on Facebook and we appreciate all of the shares um, the thumbs up um, all of those social shares really help everybody find uh, this small business we're a small team here you guys so we really appreciate your patience with us we appreciate every order that comes across our desks um, because without you we would not be here doing what it is that we love so thanks again and remember stay safe wash those hands wear those masks Continue to practice social distancing, you guys, and together we will beat this worldwide pandemic. So stay safe, and I will see you guys on Friday for Free Tip Friday. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.